All right, so I thought that I would do a video just uh, comparing the sharpness of the Nikon 50mm f1.8 G and the Sigma 17 to 50mm f2.8 lenses. Um, both of these lenses are said to be very, very sharp in their reviews, but um, you know, I've got both lenses and I actually haven't put um, them side to side yet, so I thought that I'd have a go. So I shot some portraits of myself, and these are self portraits, they're not selfies or anything like that. They're shot on a tripod. I use the infrared shutter release to, um, to uh, control the camera. And uh, so that meant that I didn't actually have any control of where the focus was going. So every single time I was hoping that it was focusing on my face and the Nikon D3200's um, auto focusing system is pretty good. And uh, it seemed to get it on my face most of the time. So as we can see from the information up here, this one was shot with the 50 millimeter f1.8 lens. The, um, the lens that I used is always in the brackets up here and the settings I use down here. I use the same settings for every single picture, 160 for per second at f11, ISO 100. Uh, why did I shoot at f11? Simple. Why would I need to blow this background out? I wanted everything to be tack sharp. I'm testing the two lenses here, and most lenses are sharpest at anywhere between about f8 and f16. So I shot at f11, which is round about in the middle. I guess you could say f13 would probably be closer to the middle, but f11 was absolutely fine here. 160 of a second with an external flash gun. The only thing I changed was the lenses. When I was shooting with the 17 to 50, I was always shooting at 50 millimeters. Uh, I did not move the camera at all, or at least I tried not to, and um, any light coming in from the windows, well I kept all the curtains open, I can't control what the weather's doing, today is quite an overcast day, but what I did do was I didn't change, I tried not to change any of the lighting other than, um, well the only thing I changed was the lens, but I want to make it a fair test. So what you're looking at here are the raw straight out of the camera, I have not done any adjustments on here whatsoever as you can see down here, everything is still exactly what it was, I have not processed these at all, these are straight out of the camera raw images, okay, so this is one that I shot with the 51.8 and um, we're shooting here at ISO 100, 160 of a second, f11 and so on. And if we zoom in, we can see that it is pretty sharp. The focus was just about right, I think. And, you know, the the eyes look in focus and the, the glasses frame looks pretty much in focus and everything like that. So that's uh, pretty sharp. A lot of people say that the Nikon 51.8G is a sharp lens, and whilst I've had it, I've noticed that it's not bad. It's um, it's not my favourite lens, to be honest with you. Excuse me there. Um, it's um, it's a prime lens, and I don't mind prime lenses, but zooms are probably better for convenience. Um, and also, it's not too sharp at f1.8, but then again, most lenses wouldn't be. So... Um, so yeah, that's how it performs um, at f11 with the flash, and uh, as you can see, it's pretty sharp. One little neat trick with Lightroom that you can do, and I'm not sure if Cantese is going to record this, so if you do get a black screen for a few minutes, please just bear with me. Um, but if you press F on your keyboard, you can actually go into full screen mode and see the photo full screen, and there you can zoom around, you can pan around the image using your mouse. Hopefully you can see that, if not then I apologise, and you can also uh, you can use control and scroll to zoom in further. So yeah, it's pretty sharp. I'm not really one for pixel peeping, but in this video, um, which I'm you know, I'm comparing the sharpness of the two lenses, I kind of need to do that. And we press escape to come out of that view. Okay, um, some other shots from the 51.8. Uh, this one is, um, whoops, that's from the 17 to 50. That's also from the 17 to 50. Um, that might have been the same shot that I was comparing before. They're all pretty similar because obviously they're all taken at the same kind of settings. This is also from the 51.8G, as we can see up here in the information. And again, it looks pretty sharp, quite nice. Um, so, yeah. That just gives you an idea of the sharpness of the 51.8G with um, raw files that are straight out of the cameras. No editing whatsoever, no touching up, nothing like that. Okay, now we'll move on to the uh, 17 to 50. Um, we'll start off with this picture here, I think. So if we press F on the keyboard and uh, pan around, we can see that this particular image is also pretty damn sharp. Um, again, you know, you can see the hairs on my face. How lovely is that? Um, you can see the um, the chips in my glasses and also, uh, you know, the, the eyes are pretty sharp as well and all the hairs there. So, you know, the Sigma 17-50 to 50 
uh, f2.8 is also a very sharp lens as we can see shot at f11 of course and 50 millimeters um, the argument would be that theoretically the Nikon 50mm f1.8 G would be a sharper lens than the 17 to 50 because it's not a zoom. A lot of people say that the um, the zoom mechanisms in the lens do reduce image sharpness. And you know, there are some extremely sharp prime lenses out there. Things like the Canon uh, 50mm L lens f1.2 is a damn sharp lens. So is the Sigma 35mm ART or ART. 1.4 that's also a very sharp lens but you know I'm not really really seeing a whole lot of difference between the um, 17 to 50 and the uh, 50 millimeter f1.8 G here I'm not really sure what's happened to my info at the top but this is also with the 17 to 50 uh, 2.8 I can tell you that now I'm not really noticing a whole lot of difference both lenses is both lenses are quite sharp so I think that if you're trying to decide which one to buy based on image sharpness um, the Sigma is probably sharper throughout the range than the Nikon I think in this occasion I've shot the Sigma at a lot of different apertures um, I haven't shot the Nikon at so many maybe a better test would be to um, try each of them going from round about f2.8 each right the way up to f22 and see which well, actually no not f22 f16 because the 50 mil 1.8 doesn't go any uh, narrower than f16 but maybe a test for the future would be to try out both lenses at 50 millimeters and just go through the range and see which one is more consistent throughout the range but certainly if you're shooting both for f11 which you would be for um, portraits like this where there's nothing in the background and landscapes they're both pretty much on par um, so if you are choosing to, not choosing to buy one, but if you are deciding whether to buy one or not, um, I wouldn't go necessarily based on the sharpness at f11 each. I would probably go on what's more practical for you. And the 17 to 50 is a more practical lens than the 50 millimeter, but you could argue that the 50 millimeter could help improve your photography by making you think about composition and everything like that and it could also um, be a bit more fun and creative because you do have the ability to go right down to f1.8 and make some interesting backgrounds and it's um, also better for low light because of that and also you know you're stuck with 50 millimeters you can't zoom or anything so you have to think a little more outside the box in terms of your composition this is another image at 17 to 50 millimeter f2.8 at 50 mil and we can see that it is again pretty sharp as well um, you know the good thing about shooting at f11 is that most of the image remains sharp not just the face okay so I thought I'd just follow it up very quickly by showing you some of the process photos so after I recorded the last bit of the video I very quickly went and processed the images I processed one of them and then saved a preset, just called it JSON, and then applied it to several of the images which I shot. Uh, this is just to make sure that all of the photos have pretty much the same uh, settings when they're processed, the same properties, things like that, just to make sure that it's still as uh, fair as possible. So this is one of the ones from the 50mm f1.8 of me, which is now being processed. And I haven't really done anything in the post-processing to increase the sharpness other than maybe increase the clarity a little bit. I think I increased the clarity by plus seven, which is really not a lot at all. So that's not going to make a huge amount of difference to the uh, overall sharpness of the image. But as we can see, the images uh, here from this one on the 51.8. Uh, let's try another one when it loads. Uh, that's from the 17 to 51A uh, to a, It looks like I shot more with the uh, 17 to 50 on this occasion. So here's another one from the uh, 51A. I think this is one of the first ones which I showed in the last section of the video. So as we can see, this is still looking pretty damn sharp here so that looks okay maybe the eyes aren't that sharp although one thing you might notice is that there's perhaps a tiny little bit more noise uh, in the images that's because I've had to increase the exposure by about one or two stops I probably should have adjusted my flash to fit properly or to fill properly but oh well uh, it seems to be okay so yeah maybe the eyes aren't quite that sharp but you know I'm really really picking here and normally you would never look at an image this sharp um not this sharp uh, this close i mean i mean really who wants to zoom in on my face so um that's uh that's 
yeah, so this is also from the uh, 17 to 50 millimeter f2.8. Actually, this one's quite a good one to compare because this is literally the same image as the last one that I showed, except it's taken on the other lens. And I mean, this is subjective. This whole test is subjective. I haven't looked at any DxO mark scores or uploaded them to any lens sharpness testing sites. This is all subjective based on what I can see, based on what you can see. I'm not seeing a whole lot of difference, but perhaps, perhaps the 17 to 50 28 at f11 is a teeny, 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 teeny bit sharper. I can't really notice a whole lot of difference, and that's because both of these lenses are pretty good. If I was shooting this with the kit lens, the 18 to 55 at f11 versus the Sigma 17 to 50 28 at f11 or the Nikon 50 uh, 18G at f11, there would be no competition. The kit lens would lose every single time. It's just not as sharp as some of these other optics which you can get. Um, let's have a look at this one. So this is shot with the 17 to 50 28, and we can see already that this is a really sharp image. Um, you know, they're both. They're, they're, they're both sharp. They're both sharp lenses. Um, I can't really tell which one is sharper, although maybe I'd probably be inclined to say that sometimes the Sigma is a bit sharper. Of course, the sharpness depends on lots of things, what you're shooting, how still the thing you're shooting is, how you focus it, do you get the focus points in the right place? That's always going to be the first thing. You know, what aperture are you shooting at? What ISO are you shooting at? Because the higher the ISO, sometimes the less sharper it is. What shutter speed are you shooting at? How are you post-processing it? There's so many things that amount to lens sharpness and it can be impossible to actually test it all fairly but hopefully from this video you've seen quite a good um, overview of how sharp each of the lenses are and um, now you have an idea about um, the kind of things that you can expect from upgrading from the kit lens or if you want to choose a 17 to 50 to 8 or a Nikon 50mm 18G so this is the end of the video now um, and yeah, thank you for watching.